Jeff, you're warning about a new Canadian bill, C-367. You've said that this bill could threaten Canadians' public expressions of faith. Uh, this is deeply concerning. What can you tell us about this proposal? Well, I would say, so first of all, it, it uh, amends the criminal code and it takes away some religious exemptions that protected Christians. So if, if you're in the United States, uh, you know, we saw the same kind of thing with the Equality Act that the Biden administration was trying to pass. And basically it creates hate speech laws. Some of those have already advanced in Canada, but Christians were protected. They said, well, if they're saying biblical things or if they're saying things according to their faith, whether that's Quranic or biblical or whatever, they're protected. And this is the alarming thing is that this strips those out. There is no protection. Uh, and as always, this is this is what the dictators and the despots do overseas to strangle Christianity or whatever faith. You know, they say, oh, we have religious freedom, but not in the public sphere. So it's the same game. It's the same game being advanced uh, around the Western world and even what we saw again with the Equality Act in the United States. Well, and I think we have to put this against the backdrop, those who would dismiss concern about this, of what is going on all over the world, especially in the West. Look at Pavi Rousen in, in Finland. Yes. Look at, I mean, yeah. case after case after case, she's been exonerated twice, essentially, and now they're, yeah. now they're appealing it to the Supreme Court. So there's yeah. a real move here in multiple countries to go yeah. after people of faith. You know, how is the bill, and this is always interesting to me, how is it being promoted? Because, of course, they're not going out there and saying, we want to crack down on Christianity. What, how are they promoting this? That's great. Yeah, so these, you know, hate speech laws, they're always being promoted to, uh, for the common good in one way or another. So whether that's, we're going to protect LGBTQ followers or, you know, the, 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 those people as a class of people, uh, or for anti-Semitism. You know, it it almost doesn't matter because the hate speech laws always create division. They always create hatred. And look, this this things these things always smack of banana republic, because very simply, here's how this thing works. This is people who uh, are elected in a democracy, and it's almost like the Marxists. They get elected in a in a in a democracy, and they use the laws of the state and they twist them and they dismantle them. They d dismantle the protections and go after their political enemies. It's it's total banana republic stuff. It's just not seen that way, but it should be. So so in this, you know, in this provision, in this proposal, you know, let's say somebody goes out there and they oppose the LGBTQ ideology. They say public things, maybe in interviews or I mean, I'm sure we don't know exactly how it would manifest itself or or they're advocating against transitioning children, you know, sure. trend in the transgender issue. What would happen to them potentially if this were to pass? Yeah, well, you know, I interviewed a pastor recently who is a Canadian pastor who's been arrested a number of times for street evangelism. Um, and when there, and again, this is here's what happens. So a lot of times he's not even being obnoxious. He's doing street evangelism, completely legal. Uh, and then the cops show up. So if he is in an area where uh, people know who he is and, and their uh, LGBTQ crowd, they will cause a complete ruckus. And then guess who gets arrested? So right now, it can he can end up at the police station, but they say, wait a minute, there's no real case here. Uh, so lots of times that's even a game. They, they arrest him, take him off the streets, and then they say, well, there's no case, so we'll throw him out. Uh, or as in the case of Paivi, as you said, what happens is then the Christian can be charged and they can be, and then those charges can stick. So they can, re they can receive fines or prison time. So there has to be in a democracy, the bedrock of democracy is religious freedom. And it's, and religious freedom is so potent because it encapsulates a number, a number of other freedoms. You have freedom of speech, um, assembly, thought, conscience. So again, to, but to remove uh, freedom of speech protections in a democracy is a nightmare and it's signaling uh, the death and the dying of democracy. It should be looked at in no, no other way. Anybody who's advancing this stuff is completely an enemy of democracy and is looking to get weapons to attack their political opponents. Well, you know, and we know Christianity is is good and true and right, but we should also have freedom to bad to have bad ideas. You know, this idea that somebody Absolutely. is saying something offensive and they should be yeah. restricted and prevented from doing it. If you're not harming somebody physically or hurting them or taking something away from them, I mean, it's very disturbing to me that this is the yeah. trend that we're that we're okay with now, that there are people 
And, and let me just say this too, the idea that this is even being proposed, right? Because yes. I'm sure you've, you've heard people who are, who are saying, don't worry about this. This is no they big deal. It won't. Be. Yeah. Right. Right. Talk about that a little bit. Well, you have to look at the, at the trajectory. There is a trajectory here. There were, there was the hate speech laws passed in Canada in 2003 and 2004. Uh, and then, but again, there were protections. See, everyone, gosh, Christians, calm down, everyone. Let's let's take a step back and be reasonable here. And now, here we've got a number of years later, and those protections are removed. So you you truly have to be concerned about this. This is this is not a thing. I wrote a, uh, a news release recently, and I said uh, my hair was a little bit on fire. But I said, you know, look, we can either start engaging. Uh, in the political system as Christians, and we can do civil disobedience, we should take to the streets because that's what will back these people up. Uh, or else you should continue in your warm bath and wonder what are those bubbles forming all around you and coming up from the bottom, alluding to we're the frog in the kettle. And unfortunately, that's just where so many Christians find themselves. Uh, these things are being promoted by enemies. They absolutely know what they're doing. Uh, they're looking for weapons to attack their political enemies, to attack Christians, and it's really an attack on all democracy. We all have to have uh, the ability to be obnoxious and to debate and to say things that are crazy. You know, we can't we can't stand up in a theater and uh, scream fire. We can't say this person should be attacked or killed. But democracy means you have freedom of speech, all ideas. It's the marketplace of ideas. Everyone should be able to voice their opinion, no matter whether it's great, bad, or stupid, whatever. How are, from what you can tell so far through your work at International Christian Concern, how are Christians and other, because this doesn't just affect Christians, it affects people of other faiths. Yes, how are people reacting to this proposal from what you've heard? Well, so many people are not aware of it. Uh, that's the alarming thing. So I'm glad we put it out there and it's getting some attention. Um so, but it's largely anything dealing with democracy and the passing of arcane laws and, they're, you know, when they're these small things that, that that's the whole point. They're passed quietly and hopefully no one notices. Um, so most people, unless they're involved in advocacy or religious freedom, they're not quite aware. They know there's something wrong. They, they see, you know, what did we see recently with the White House? Uh, working with social media to attack enemies and to attack speech they didn't like. Uh, crazy in terms of democracy. Paivi, like you said, another uh, Finnish uh, congresswoman, an MP, but a congresswoman, and attacked repeatedly by basically the Justice Department in their country. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether the courts exonerate or the, the Justice Department, the, the liberal, very liberal Justice Department who doesn't like her stance is going to keep coming after. That's punishment enough. She'll be ruined financially. She'll be tied up and completely ineffective uh, in as an MP. And, and that's the real course of action. So getting back to the core of the answer is like many people just don't understand what's going on and they, they need to wake up. What is your advice, you know, through the work that you're doing, maybe people can come alongside you guys, but, but what is your advice for Christians and others, maybe even atheists who are hearing this and they're alarmed by it, you know, and they're saying, what do we do? How do we step in to try to prevent not only this piece of legislation, but other similar pieces of legislation from passing? Yeah. And, and any thinking person, it doesn't matter what your political stripe is, your religious stripes, you know, any of that, if you understand democracy and freedom, you're going to be alarmed at this uh, and you should not be promoting it because look, the tides turn uh, and there's masses of Christians that, that we all have to get along in a democracy. And anytime you're seeing the rules bent to, to protect some small class, it's really, again, that's not the idea. It's to gain, it's to gain legislative weapons, to, to gain judicial weapons against political enemies. So if, if, uh, if you're on the left, if you're on the right, if you're an atheist, a uh, Muslim, it doesn't matter. We really, anybody who's in favor of freedom, which is such a precious thing, and, and is a relatively new thing in history, as you know, it has to be guarded as, ours, as our founders, founders said repeatedly, it's a precious thing. It needs to be guarded. And there are always those willing to take it away for their own gain. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to break this down. We will continue to follow it and we'll have you back to talk more about it as there are new developments on the story. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, Billy.